being a ministry-minded overseer, and I mentioned last week, if you were paying any attention at all, that's the key to the lesson this morning. Uh, just being here, you're, you're actually ministering to people. I won't repeat everything from last week, but uh, folks, sometimes there's a thought of, of uh, well, I just don't have any, anywhere or any, any specific area I can minister in. Well, you're here this morning. And so whether you like it or not, you're ministering. And be thankful for that. You say, well, I'm just occupying a pew. And that's the only ministry God's get. Well, then occupy it. Amen. Amen. It's not complicated, OK? Don't occupy it for me. Don't occupy it for the pastor. Occupy it for the Lord. That's where God wants you to be there. Amen? Now, the follow-up to last week's lesson on this being a ministry-minded overseer is there's something else most of us have doctorates in. Right? I've never been to college. Oh, you've got a doctorate in this one. Amen? And that's a matter of speaking. Okay? Say, well, where can I be used of the Lord in this matter of ministering? Well, for one thing, you can be used of the Lord here in ministering to others by speaking to others and how you speak to others. But let's take this a step further today and think about this. You've been around a lot of people this week. I have no doubt. Some of us have been around a lot of people. Okay? You had the opportunity given to you during this past week to be a, a, a ministry-minded person, so to speak. You've had the opportunity to minister to people. You didn't, may not even have realized it. Now, I don't, I don't know about yourself. I, have, I was given the opportunity to minister to some people on the construction site. I, I didn't minister as quite as God would have had it done. Amen? So pray for me. My, my idea of ministering with my mouth is sometimes not quite the Lord's idea. But if you find your place in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, this is important, and I ask if you, if you would pay attention because the lesson is on, on ministering in the in particular area of, of speaking. But there's some key areas of speaking that you're going to have to understand. And if you, if you say, well, Brother Doug, I've got this all figured out, then I'll challenge you to be a good listener this morning because I, you rest assured there's something God has for each of us this morning in this matter of ministry and speaking. But Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now stop right there. That, that gets rid of the, let's get down to brass tacks. That gets rid of the swearing and the cursing. That gets, that gets rid of the off-color jokes. That gets rid of a lot of different things. If you're saved, God expects you not only to act like it, but to speak like it. God, uh, God's people ought to have it in their heads that people are listening to you even if you don't realize it, and they are making and judging you based a lot of times not only how you look, how you act, but how you speak. So when, when, you, when you read this verse again, it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, why that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed under the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, look carefully here, and wrath, anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Father, thank you for the privilege of bringing a lesson this morning. Lord, may you do the speaking. And yet, Father, with you doing the speaking, God help us to be good listeners. Uh, Lord, I, I've been far too guilty far too many times of sitting in a Sunday school lesson or a Bible message, a preaching uh, time, and just letting it just go off the cross the top of my head and not hearing, not listening. Help us to, Lord, be focused this morning. Help us to realize it's, it's, it's your word that's being brought. And again, we pray you would do the teaching. Help us to be good listeners, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at me in the book of James, chapter 1. This is not new material, but I think it's good material to review. Some of us, if we were honest with ourselves, and I'm at the front of the line with this, I need it reviewed probably daily, this matter of being a good listener, because so help me. Um, if you've ever, I'll take this morning, I don't know how many of you have gotten around and shaken hands with people and introduced yourself. You, you know where this is going. But somebody, I can introduce, be introduced to somebody. Uh, or the, in your name, Richard, okay? Not that I didn't get the last one, because I had a hard time with the first one. Amen. But about 10 minutes later, somebody asked me, so who's, who's the visitor? Uh, I don't know. I think it starts with an R, brother. So this, just, a, just, a little, just a little illustration here of just what poor listeners we can be. 
so this morning as we look at the lesson, look with me in James chapter 1, uh, if you would please, verse number 19, James 1, 19. Look at how God orders things in the verse 19 of James 1. And think with me and, and ask the Lord to, to help focus your thoughts. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, that every man be swift to hear. You notice the order here God's put it in? He wants you to learn to listen first. Uh, I've, I'm pretty good at, at talking, okay? And, and I like to be heard. And I may have company this morning. Amen. Most of us like to be heard and get our, our, the last word in sometimes. But I'll tell you what, there, there's something to be said about learning to be a good listener. Um, there are times I think somebody's staring at me. What's wrong? My glasses got a spot on it. What's the deal? I have observed, and maybe you have too, there are once in a great while, there is somebody that's really tuned to listening. They're almost staring at you in a sense. But what they're doing is they, they're, they've learned to listen. And what's almost scary about that is it teaches you also with the listing to be very careful about what you say. Because some people, like I say, have learned how to listen. And they not only have learned how to listen, they remember. Amen? And some of these folks make very good attorneys. Okay? Amen. They make very good attorneys. They make very good forensics experts. However you want to look at it. They've learned the art, they've mastered the art of learning to listen. You'd be surprised what you learn about a person if you would just simply be quiet and learn to listen. It's interesting in James chapter 119 how God orders this first. It says, let every man, it isn't just hear, it says swift to hear. But then he goes on to say, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now why is that? Because just about the time I think I've got you figured out where you're going with what you're, you, you're saying, I'm already pulling the six gun out, amen, and letting you have it. And I haven't heard the whole cause yet. God says, you know what, I've got all the facts, okay? So let's back this up again. Slow to speak, slow to wrath, why? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Oftentimes we go off half, half cock, we've only heard part of, the, part of the story, amen, and we got it all figured out. But this matter of learning to listen, I've got four key points this morning. Go praise the Lord, Brother Doug. Four key points divided by how many minutes he should be done by. Listen, one of the keys to learning to be a good listener is self-discipline. Now, now just take this morning, okay? Husbands and wives, this is a great exercise, okay? Take the lesson this morning. If one of the keys to learning to listen is self-discipline, okay? Now what that's going to require, and I want you to think with me here, and hopefully it doesn't come across as preaching or berating as much as teaching, is that when you have to learn to listen, it requires some self-discipline. That means you're gonna actually have to, and this generation has a hard time with this. I didn't grow up with a cell phone, praise the Lord, there's advantages to that. You're actually gonna have to steal your cell phone like you're in court, amen? When the judge says, I don't want to hear another phone go off. He's not kidding in the court of law. Amen. Now, if you could take the court of law and, and a judge saying that, we ought to have enough respect for the things of God. Amen. Because here, God has something for each of you this morning. So if you're distracted and you come into Sunday school this morning with a lot of things on your mind, okay, or you're still on a cell phone, I just, I'm, okay, bear with me here. Or however you want to look at it. I know we're busy. I know things are going on. You're going to miss, not what I have to say, but often we miss what God has to say. So when you leave church this morning and you're out eating and fellowshipping afterwards, husbands and wives, you ask yourselves this question back and forth. What was the lesson on? What was it about? What were the four key points of listening? Oh, better yet, what was the Bible message that they let me talk about? Okay? It helps, listen, it helps each other, husbands and wives, okay? It teaches us to focus. It teaches us a little bit of self-discipline. Uh, think with me here as we look at the book of First uh, Philippians chapter 4. And before you go there, look with me in James chapter 126. I want to read this. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man religion is vain. What, what's God saying here? You claim to know God. You seem to know Christ. You claim to be saved, but you can't control your mouth. Uh, something's not right here, okay? 
So as we look at this matter of listening, God puts it first. Look with me in the book of Philippians 4. Now you say, brother, I know this verse. It's, it's, it's quoted, it's on the wall of our house. 4.13 of Philippians, amen? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Well, I don't feel like listening. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I've heard this lesson before. I can still do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. See, if nothing else, if you've heard the lesson before, parents with children, it's, it can be a help in teaching them. To a younger Christian, to the older Christian, you can help each other, you can minister to each other. But this matter of learning to listen, it requires some self-discipline. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can learn to listen. I can learn to sit still. I can learn to focus. I can ask for God's help in this area. Here's something else you might think of. It often requires a stillness, follow me here, or quietness. A stillness or quietness. Brother, do you know how chaotic my week is? I don't have a quiet moment all week. That's true sometimes, isn't it? But you know what? If you're looking for a still, quiet time, God will bless you with it. He'll give you that time, amen, to speak to your heart. He'll give you that time in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the chaos of your work week. He will give you that time if you're looking for it. I need God's help throughout the week. I don't know about you folks out there this morning. I need God's help. I need God's watch care. I need, I need God's patience with me. I need God's direction during the week, okay? Even in the midst of the busy work week, I need to hear from the Lord. Those of you that have reared children, mothers, I don't, how can you recognize the sound of your baby in the midst of six or seven of them? How do you know that? Moms, come on now, this is it's just another illustration. How do you know that's yours, that that's the one that's crying? Of which all the other ones cry. Well, that's, I, I hear mine, amen? Now uh, follow me here. You've learned to tune your ears, haven't you? You've learned to, learn to tune your ears to the sound of your little child, amen? My dad and mom are here from Minnesota this morning and uh, grew up a farm. We were acutely aware of where dad was on that track, okay, as kids. Very much aware of where dad was. To the point, and no kidding, Dad, you thought you heard a noise. Now, it was about half a mile, quarter mile away, I guess quarter mile away, the grandparents' farm. And sure enough, you'd run out to where you could see the tractor way over there, and there's Dad. Now, now, that's a simple illustration, but you became so acutely in tune, amen, to some things. And that was one of those things I've never forgotten from growing up in the farm. You learned to listen for dad and mom, amen, in particular my, my dad farming. And you ran over there, amen, to find out what dad wanted. We didn't have a cell phone to call back. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> amen. It's a long run, a quarter mile through fences and things to find out what dad wanted. But listen, what, what are you, rear children, parents, what, is, what am I trying to say here with these illustrations? You learn to get tuned into God. In the midst of all the excitement throughout the week, you learn to get tuned into your heavenly father. When God's calling, even if it's that still small voice, you're listening and you catch it, amen? Look at me in 1 Samuel chapter three, if you would please. 1 Samuel chapter three. If you get nothing else out of the lesson this morning, look with little Samuel here and, and God help it to be us, amen? We won't read this whole chapter, just part of it, you know the story with Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, it says, The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 3. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. It came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. I think this happens three times in this chapter. But here's what's the key to this is, am I that tuned into God asking for calling my name? Brother Doug, brother Doug, amen. Am I even listening? Heaven help me what I've missed out during the week because I'm just not focused. I'm not, I'm not self-disciplined. I, I haven't, 
I haven't, I haven't mastered it yet of listening to my heavenly father or for my heavenly. Folks, you'd be surprised how God changes direction on you during the week and he wants you to do something else. And sometimes we're so busy and it's so chaotic and it's so noisy out that we completely miss it. And, and, and I think I, I praise the Lord for mercy, praise the Lord for his grace. But you know, you should get, you should get to the point that in the midst of the storm, you hear the still small voice of God speaking to you saying, don't do that. Don't go there. Stop. Take a different route. Amen. Do not proceed with this. Yeah, it's, it's important, folks. This matter of, of listening requires some self-discipline. This matter of listening is going to require stillness or quietness on part. Here's something else, too. Acts chapter 17, again, not not some uh, not scripture you're not familiar with but acts chapter 17 look with me in acts 17 you're going to have to have a teachable spirit god wants to tell us some things and perhaps we even get this matter of listing somewhat down but you know what you're going to have to have a teachable spirit when God knocks on your heart's door and says, hey, let's, let's discuss something here. I've got, I've got a different plan for you. You're going to need a teachable spirit with this matter of listening. Acts chapter 17, verse number 11 tells us, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. God's going to speak to your heart and hold that thought. Look at me in Acts chapter 18 as well. Acts chapter 18 as well. You remember Apollos? You're going to have to have a teachable spirit. You're going to have to have some self-discipline. You're going to have to have times of stillness or quietness of listening for the Lord. You're going to have to have a teachable spirit. In Acts chapter 18, verse number 24, look here, a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Now listen, this thing with Apollos, he was eloquent. He was a good speaker. He was studied in the word of God. But God wanted some more. God wanted to give him some more. And you're going to have to realize in this matter of learning, this matter of listening, you're going to have to have a teachable spirit. See, even this morning, you can have the attitude, I've heard these before, Brother Doug, you're going to have to have a teachable spirit. I need reminding. And this matter of being a good speaker, I believe, starts with being a good listener. You'd be surprised, again, this area of ministry, what gets missed during the week, simply because we simply have not learned how to be a good listener. Again, he was mighty in the scriptures, but they took him aside and expounded on him the word of God. And he could have had an attitude that said, you know what? I tell you what, I'm pretty good at this and I'm pretty well taught at this and I've got this pretty well figured out. I don't need any more advice, but he didn't. And what you find as you look at his life here, boy, he got back at it and even was used of the Lord even more mightily in the scriptures. So this matter of being a good speaker revolves around several points. One, having uh, some self-discipline. Two, there's going to have to be a quietness or stillness in your life, even in the midst of the storm of learning to listen to the still small voice of God. It's going to have to have a, re requires a teachable spirit. And then listen, sometimes God's going to have to reprove us and you're going to have to have a willingness to be reproved. And that's the part that's sometimes difficult. Look with me in Proverbs chapter six, very quickly here, very, very quickly. Proverbs chapter six, See, sometimes God gets our attention. We are listening. God does speak to us. We hear what God says. But then sometimes I don't like what God tells me. Okay? Do I, do I have company here sometimes? Well, I sometimes get this matter of listening down pat. And, and actually, it's a little bit of self-discipline here by the grace of God. And, and there's in the midst of the storm, God is speaking to me or in the quiet time. And, and God's trying to teach me something, but, but then guess what happens? I don't like what God's telling me. And this is kind of a key to this matter of listening here. We don't always like to be reproved or corrected. Proverbs chapter six, look at me in Proverbs six twenty three, For the commandment is a lamp, 
the law is light. Look here. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Yep. I need course correction, okay? Um, I, you may need course correction sometimes too. Uh, don't take it as, oh, why? Take it as praise God. Uh, I was listening by the grace of God. Uh, God blessed me miraculously with a teachable spirit, amen, which doesn't happen too often. But, but, but guess what? Um, praise the Lord that, that he's, he's offered me some corrective action in my life to take before it's a complete train wreck, amen? Or to avoid the, the, where it says bridge out, amen? Stop me before I got to that point of trying to race across or to deep flood waters. You're going to have to, in this matter of being a good listener, we're not always gonna like it, but God is going to reprove and correct. And listen, count that a blessing. I want God's reproof. I need God's reproof. I want the course correction, amen? Why is that, Brother Doug? Aren't you your own man? I hope not. If you're saved, you're bought with a price this morning. You want God's leadership and direction. You may not like it, amen, but thank God he cares for you and gives it, amen? Learn to accept God's reproof and be thankful for it. If you're in Proverbs, look at one other chapter, Proverbs 15. Very quickly, Proverbs 15, verse number 31. Proverbs 15, 31. The ear that heareth the reproof of life, look here, abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. You gotta throw this, verse 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Now, let me ask you a quick question for those of you that were listening, and I'm not being smarty. Let me throw this out. Without looking, without thinking about this too hard, what were the four points covered in this matter of being a good listener? Oh, what was that first verse? Amen. Just do a self-test. What were the four points covered this morning on being a good listener? Now, we're going to go into this matter of speaking. But challenge yourself. Husbands, challenge your wives. Wives, challenge your husbands. Parents, challenge your children. You weren't listening, were you? Amen. Husbands with wives, amen. It becomes extraneous noise as you get into the marriage of many years. It's, did you say something, honey? Uh, or you know, come on now, right? Uh, what was that noise? Oh, it's the wife speaking, amen, oh, praise the Lord. Huh? Or vice versa, right? The, the, the kiddos, come on, how many of you are in children? The third time, I'm not gonna, wait, why am I telling you three times, amen? Huh? How the selector switch gets turned to the off position, amen? Yeah, this thing is a, oh boy, if you can get it down pat, praise the Lord, amen? Now, look with me, if you would, please, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10. You're still in Proverbs, chapter 10. We don't have much time here. We've got about five, six minutes or so. I want to throw a couple verses out just for you to consider this morning. Proverbs, chapter 10. In verse 19, this is a great verse. It says, In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. And I've said this many times in this class, less said, less said, less said, is less the need to be repented of, amen? In a multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Now you want a good test of this, you just get in a little bit of a heated discussion with somebody if you're not careful, amen? And it goes downhill at a rapid rate sometimes. But you learn to refrain your lips, amen? and ask God for grace, you'd be surprised sometimes how the Lord will just kind of push the problem away from you, okay? All right, amen, put that into practice this week. God, help me to say less, but help me, Lord, to focus on this matter of listening. Lord, help me not to sleep through the week, amen, but Lord, help me to focus. Help me, Lord, to say less, help me to refrain my lips, amen, and by your grace, be a help to the solution and not a problem. If you're still in Proverbs, look at Proverbs chapter 17. 
See, it's not that the scriptures are difficult to understand. Come on now, amen? Are they difficult to understand this morning? No, it's, it's the application part that most of us trip and stumble over. So by the grace of God, I can do all things through Christ. Okay, Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse number 27. <laughs> he that hath knowledge spareth his words. A man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. He that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Yeah, again, there's this emphasis on refraining the lips. Let, you, have you heard this? Less said is better. Less said is better. Less said is better. Amen. In fact, I'll throw one out for you in this matter of preaching and teaching. Brother Brian, I'm well aware. We, less of me, more of the Lord. Less of me, more of the Lord. Amen. It's just a simple application on teaching and preaching. Uh, God's going to do a work on your heart, not through my words, but through his. Amen. Through his word in a working of the Holy Spirit, not mine necessarily. So again, let me read this verse. He said, he that hath now spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. He that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Now, when we do speak, a couple verses, and we'll close here. Look with me in the book of Psalm, chapter 19. Ask God for help with this. I want to be used of the Lord. Say, I'm looking for a ministry, Brother Doug. Well, here's one. Learning to be a good listener, but then learning to speak as God directs you to. You can minister to people this morning here at Trinity. Believe it or not, you can actually say hi with a smile on your face. Even if you don't mean it, pray God that he'd help you to mean it. Amen? You can minister to folks this morning just by what you say or by what you don't say. Amen? Psalm chapter 19, verse number 14 tells us, Let the words of my mouth, and the key to the words of my mouth is the meditation of my heart, be acceptable, look here, in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That's a great verse. It says, let the words of my mouth this morning, amen, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yeah, boy, that would change things, wouldn't it? That would revolutionize Christianity. If we actually showed up on a Sunday morning, amen, with the intent of being a good listener, learning to refrain the lips, looking to be a blessing when we do speak, amen? And then take that ministry, amen, out to the world around you where God's placed you, in your neighborhood, at work, at school, wherever God's placed you. What an opportunity, amen? Well, I just don't know where to minister. You can start here, amen, you're here, okay? Then you can take it out there later, okay? Yeah, that waiter or waitress that brings and serves your table today, guess what? Did you ever think that sometimes you could actually speak a word to them about the, the Lord or just be a blessing and a help to them rather than complaining about the poor service again? Amen. Right? Look here. Look, look at me again in, in Proverbs chapter uh, 25, 11. Proverbs chapter 25, 11. And I have to close with this. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11. I like how this verse, it's very simple. It says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Now, let's take just a minute and think about this. A word fitly spoken. Who am I speaking to this morning? Can I be a blessing to that person? Lord, give me the words to speak. Well, I'm lazy, tired, and grumpy. Well, God help you with all three of those areas, amen? But this word fitly spoken, just the right thing at the right time. Amen. Lord, help me to be used that way. We're out of time this morning, folks. Uh, I trust the lesson's been a blessing to you. If you're concerned about ministry, what about this area? Amen. Of listening, but then being a good speaker.